Здравейте. Хай. Това е Мари Гудбуб. Ти се казвам правил? Да. Окей. Това е журналист. Френч, Герман. Да. Всичко е във върши. Ще е също с криптопарти хора, и те ще направят една криптопарти сега. Го да. See what she's have to tell you there. And today she's going to talk about uh, why crypto party must die. Um, I know what, what about this is, but basically listen to her. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, who here is a programmer, a security expert? Raise your hand if you're a programmer. Uh, great, awesome. I am not a programmer. I am not a security expert at all. Um, to, been, to be honest, I barely understand how these things work. I am thankful for the work you do. You are needed. But today, I'm not going to talk about how great your work is. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm a journalist, and I'm an activist. I've been mostly working with people who work in communication or in art. For a really long time, I thought that your word, the word, your, your way of acting, your tools, weren't mine. I thought that this was way too complicated for me. It actually probably is. What you do is really complicated, even if it's not impossible to understand, I know that. And you guys, besides being really good at doing, making these really complicated tools, are really bad at something. You're bad at communicating. You are bad at sharing the tools you create with people who don't identify as being experts in what you do. It's a shame you're so bad at it. You should leave your hacker space or your workplace for a while and notice how much your stuff is needed out there and how hard it is for normal people to use. I'm not a programmer, but I don't, that doesn't mean that I'm not a hacker space nerd. I know how easy it is to stay in there. And I definitely belong to these people who barely see the sunlight because they prefer to spend their time among bottles of Claude Mate and nerds. I know it's convenient, I know it's easier, but it's wrong. We need you out there, and I have good news. If you'd leave the hacker space, and by this I don't only mean the hacker space, I mean the nerd scene in general, you'd notice something. There are many people out there who could help. We need you out there, and I have good news. There are many people out there. This is not working. There are many people out there who would help you. There are activists, communication specialists, journalists, and they're willing to work with you. They're amazing at sharing, like, for example, a journalist for The Intercept here. I think you should give it a try. Edward Snowden's revelation helped to raise the awareness about surveillance. What he did is amazing, but it's not enough. It's our job to take over now. We need together to bring encryption to as many people as possible. What you do is great, but it's not enough. I found this the other day. Isn't it depressing that even BuzzFeed thinks we're bad at our jobs? Um, what BuzzFeed wrote is that um, people have no clue about encryption and our software isn't helping. If, they, if these guys get it, there is something really wrong. We need your tools and we need people to bring them to the general public. public what we need is good communication. So who here is a journalist or an artist or works in communication in any way? Anyone? Yay, a few. Great. Um, did you already work on privacy topics? Who here worked on privacy topic as a communication person? Three, yay. Well, you should try. And you should help the nerds who are absolutely not able to communicate their tools to raise awareness. You should give it a try. You should have a chat, um, communication people with nerds after this talk. You should talk to the programmers who are there, get to know them, and share your ideas with them. I think you should... I'm sorry, this is absolutely not working. Um, so lately I've been thinking a lot about how to communicate. 
As a journalist, I want to help everyone to be aware of what's happening, of how, what surveillance means, of how it works, and so on. As a journalist, I also want to fight for the free press, because that's, this is a topic that's really linked to surveillance. Journalists need encryption tools, unfortunately. As an activist, as a security trainer, I try to find ideas to explain how tools work in a way that everyone would understand. As a, and a journalist and a, as a journalist and as a trainer, I am also wondering why we haven't been better at changing things. I hope, I hope that we agree that we're in a position where more than ever we need to help changing things. And we need to accept any help we can get, even more if this help is the kind of help that would, will enable us to spread our knowledge. By this I mean arts, communication, good design, not only building more and more and more tools that are piling up that no one can use. Crypto Party is a decentralized global <laughs> initiative to introduce public the basic tools for protecting privacy to everyone. The idea was conceived in the wake of the Australian Cyber Crime Legislation Amendment Bill 2011, that means before Snowden, by the way, guys. Uh, and the reasoning that laws like this, um, is that laws that like this have no power if everyone uses encryption. We have two major principles. It's really easy to throw a crypto party. Just be excellent to each other. Respect everyone who wants to learn something, even if you feel like they're stupid because they just don't have the background you have, and they're not stupid, actually. And do things. Organize crypto parties. Find new, new ways to teach. What we teach at Crypto Party are tools in, that we teach in, work up, in workshops like PGP, Tor, and OTR, naturally but also mobile security, browser plugins, files and hard drive encryption, and so on. We also try to explain the concepts because they're complicated and this is the basis that's needed. Running a crypto party is amazing. In a few hours, you are able to empower people by providing them tools that they never thought they would be able to use. And so help them to get back a certain level of privacy they didn't think they had to r the right to have anymore. Uh, I remind you that the Article 12 of the Declaration of Human Rights says that you have a right to privacy. Um, and a crypto party is also fun. It's meeting people, learning, teaching each other in a relaxed and respectful way. I have been organizing lots of crypto party, and I have to say I really love it. But crypto party is not the solution. Not everyone comes to a crypto party. Not everyone can do so, and not everyone wants to do so. And even if everyone did, if we needed to teach every single person all these complicated tools, hours long, in any place in the world, that would as take us so long that would be fucked anyway by surveillance. This is impossible. Crypto party is a tiny bandage on a giant wound. We are doing our best, but we're not naive. Crypto party will not save us as a society from mass surveillance. Don't overestimate us. We will not fix all, our, all your mistakes in terms of building tools. We will not be able to get everyone to use what you build these days. I don't know what you think we are, but I'm pretty sure that we're not superheroes. Crypto party will not solve the problem of mass surveillance. The problem on the technical level, I know there are more, many more levels, tech, um, political, social, and so on is that the tools that provide good end-to-end -end encryption are too complicated. Whoever isn't an expert as in computer security will need to go through a long, complicated process to understand the tools and master their use and so regain their rights to a basic level of privacy. This is way too much effort. This is not something we can expect from everyone. We don't, can't expect they will be willing to do it or even able to do it. I'm not saying everything is bad. I have much respect for everyone who provides us with tools. But most of these tools are, unfortunately, really far from being accessible to everyone. A good example of what should be done is Signal from Open Whisper Systems. This is probably the only tool that's easy to use these days. They manage to provide a tool for encrypted mes messages and calls on smartphones that are easy to install, understand, and use. Does this look horrible and complicated to use? I don't think so. I'm not saying this is perfect. I, it can probably be improved. But this is the way we should think about tools in general. But in most cases, this is what a beginner has to deal with. 
this is the website of OTR, of the Record Messenger. Um, if you want to encrypt your chat in a secure way, it's the most secure tool. It's what you want to use. It has really strong encryption, and honestly, it's even not that difficult to use. It's pretty simple compared to most of the tools like PGP, for example. I love OTR, but this web website won't help spreading it. If I don't know OTR and I don't really know about computers, this won't help me. First, this is what we can see as an explanation on how it works. I guess encryption and authentication is pretty clear. These people could understand these two points with the tiny explanations under it, but then just forget about it. Digital signatures that are checkable by a third party. Who the hell is gonna understand that? Same for private keys. This might si sound simple to you, but what percentage of the population does the, know the word private key? You might know it, I do know it, great for us. But these tools, were they conceived for everyone or for us only? Is it for you, me, and a few nerds? Or maybe some, some more people need these? So let's assume someone recommended OTR to me and I'm just not gonna try understand how it works. I'm just gonna install it because someone said it's secure and I trust this person. I just try to download it. So this is what you can see under download. Um, most people use Pigeon or Adium if they want to use OTR. There is no mention of Adium here. So Mac users are excluded from the start. They won't find any information. And then also Linux users are weirdly excluded from this really nerdy tool because it's only for Windows. And then if you're using Windows and Linux, you should also know that you need to install Pigeon and this tool, not only this tool. And then once you're done with the installation, you need to find all the plugins. And this is a really long thing to scroll. And you find the off the record messaging and you install OTR. So go find that this is actually the one you want to activate. And then you're gonna generate a key. And if you understand what generate a key means and you actually do it, then you might start chatting in an encrypted way by clicking on this button saying not private. So the way to start a private conversation on Pigeon with OTR is clicking on not private. Who the hell is gonna find that out by themselves? And then you might be safe if you manage to check the fingerprints, meet everyone in real life, and you need to never stop, um, not, never forget clicking on not private to be private, because Pigeon records your logs if it doesn't encrypt. So beautiful usability. And I had a really nice surprise lately, a new website for OTR. It looks way nicer, not the best website ever, but compared to the old one. I thought, yeah, good job. And there's actually some tiny pieces of information on this website if you scroll down. But if you want to get to more, know more about OTR and click on this button, this is what you see. Thank you, guys. Great new website. So the user pain level by one of the most simple tools is very high. And I'm not even talking about PGP, because if I'd need to do that for PGP, I'd probably need three hours to go through PGP and Enigma and the different client and the fight between PGP and GPG and GNUPG and it's like who can get started with that information. This needs to change and it might be details to you because you know, you know what to do. You know how the software works but every single detail I mentioned is more than a tiny detail for someone who is new to this and this can be changed. So, Another tool I used to criticize a lot for their bad usability was Tor. I tried to install Tor for the first time, I think in 2010, if not before. That's the time where I had a Windows computer and not even a smartphone yet. Um, I tried to install Tor because I, I read something about it and I was curious, which is actually pretty positive, someone who was curious about privacy tools. Um, it was a huge fail. I, clicked on links and links and links and I read tutorials and I don't remember how many hours this took me and then at some point the tutorial ended where now Tor is running but I didn't see anything on my computer. There was not even an icon. I was just like, 
is Tor running? Is Tor not running? What does this bring to me? What should I do with it? Can I browse normally? Or maybe it's not working. So I gave up and decided that these tools were definitely too complicated with me. And it took me almost four years to come back to encryption. Lately, I've been really happy about what, how Tor improved their communication. This was really released a little bit less than a year ago, I think. These slides are awesome. I have some papers if you want them later. Um, they're great for tools for teaching Tor, and they're great because they say something really important about Tor. They show Tor understood after a really long time that they should be better at communicating. At CryptoParty, we try to come up with solutions as most tools don't provide them. We make videos, tutorials, and we're volunteers. We, this is not our job. We just try to come up with every do-it-yourself solution we can find to make this encryption more ac as accessible as possible. I wanted to show you this. Unfortunately, the screen is quite bad, but you can see two boxes with locks. And there, is, there are fingerprints on the boxes, and uh, the small things in the front are private keys. The boxes are the public key. It's extremely complicated, but this is what someone who visits a crypto party and comes five times comes up with to explain himself how it works in the end after five crypto parties. And he decided to share it because he had just been through that and he understood that it was not possible without any good tools to explain it. I think this guy is amazing, by the way, making that after five crypto parties. It works really well. Um, but as awesome as it is, it's again a band-aid on the giant root of the problem of encryption, a solution that we have to come up with because your tools are bad. As long as it will need it, we'll keep doing what we do, teaching encryption to everyone who wants to learn it because everyone has the right to privacy. Privacy is a basic human right. But even if we love what we do, we're still hoping that soon we won't need be needed anymore. Crypto party must die as much as we love it. And we need you to help us to kill crypto party. We ask you programmers to work with us, to work with people who are on the ground teaching and explaining your tools, to work with your experienced people, communication people, to work with whoever understands and wants to help you how to be better at sharing these tools. You need to have the needs of people in mind. And if you're not able to do this, just work with other people. As we're not so far yet, um, we'd like to invite you at our crypto party. I know this is big irony, but as long as you don't make the tools, we're going to keep doing it. Uh, we'll start at two in the workshop area. And to end this talk, I'd like to share something with you. It's a video we made uh, to explain the basic ideas uh, behind why we need crypto and why surveillance is bad. And it sounds really basic, but most people are don't even know that when I join a crypto party. And I think it's really beautiful that we had this ID for this video exactly a year ago at Init Lab when we had a crypto party here. So they're the brain behind the video. Um, can we maybe turn off the light so people see it? Okay, well, then you see that video. Have fun. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm trying. <coughs> One more example of super good usability, by the way. Technology to open up our democracy. Let me ask a very simple question. Does it concern you that the government is spying on you? They're not doing anything wrong, and they have nothing to hide, and they're not terrorists. What's your Facebook password? Uh, I'm not going to give you my Facebook password. What's your bank account number? Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, say it. No. <laughs> uh, I don't like this interview. <laughs> Si tu n'as rien à cacher, alors on pourra mettre une caméra dans ta chambre à coucher et dans ta salle de bain et en publier les images sur Internet.
ou alors si tu n'as rien à cacher, on peut prendre ton login et ton mot de passe sur Facebook ou sur Google, les publier et que chacun puisse aller fouiller dedans. And it is also the case that I want to have a world where everyone has privacy and thus dignity, confidentiality and integrity in their daily lives without having to ask for it, to beg it from a master. Because it is the case that when you ask someone for those things, they may not grant them. And then you will know you are not free. Does the NSA routinely intercept American citizens' emails? No. Does the NSA intercept Americans' cell phone conversations? No. Google searches? No. Text messages? No. Amazon.com orders? No. Bank records? No. I give you the surveillance state, ladies and generals. Director Clapper, does the NSA collect data on hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. Oh, hi, hey, hey, son of a bitch from the NSA. Ich bin ein Insider, doch ihr seht mir alle zu, das bedeutet wohl, ich bin keiner. Ihr lest mein Tagebuch, sie wissen jetzt so einiges. Es ist interessant, besonders wenn es ein Geheimnis ist. Sie wissen, ob du pleite bist, sie wissen, ob du Scheine machst. Ohne Papier kommst du nicht raus. Reisepass, treff den Typ von Wikileaks und lege eine Beichte ab. Und dann werde ich verurteilt von dem Land, das ich verteidigt habe. NSA, in the intelligence community in general, uh, is focused on getting intelligence wherever it can, by any means possible, but it believes on the grounds of sort of a self-certification that they serve the national interest. Du weißt, wir überwachen jeden von hier oben. Wir kriegen alles mit, bist du einmal ungezogen. Mann, wir hängen dir in den Ohren, riechen Kavio oder Trüffel. Es gibt etliche Methoden, um die Daten zu entschlüsseln. The NSA specifically targets the communications of everyone. It ingests them by default. It collects them in its system and it filters them and it analyzes them and it measures them and it stores them for periods of time, simply because that's the easiest, most efficient, and most valuable way to achieve these ends. We're all wired up now. We're all being fed lies. Not long till we get on the red sound. Lange hatten die Opfer der NSA kein Gesicht. Aber dieses geheime Dokument der NSA kann das ändern. Denn darin findet sich die IP-Adresse des Studenten Sebastian Hahn. Es ist meine Server gelistet in diese Liste von ähm, Internetadressen. Das ist ein bisschen schockierend. You don't have to have done anything wrong. You simply have to eventually fall under suspicion from somebody, even by a wrong call. And then they can use the system to go back in time and scrutinize every decision you've ever made every friend you've ever discussed something with and attack you on that basis to sort of derive suspicion from an innocent life and paint anyone in the context of a wrongdoer. I feel like I'm home on my own. These revelations, the ones that we published thus far and the ones that will continue to be publishing in the future, what they really illustrate is exactly what you said, which is that they don't call it total information awareness anymore. That was a little bit too honest of a term. That was probably the main reason why it created such uproar, because it was just too too nakedly clear what it was intending to, to, to accomplish. But what the NSA is doing, not just domestically, but globally, is creating a total information awareness system. The last story that we William published... worked for the US government for 32 years. He was responsible for electronic espionage. A decade ago, when the authorities began to bug U.S. citizens, he left the service. The fight against terrorism seemed to change the rules of engagement overnight. I mean, there virtually is nothing in the network that they can't have a copy of. If they start targeting you, so, 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 so what? They're, they already have your data. I can't find out what they're doing with my data. But I know they have it, okay. So I make sure I write in there whatever I, whatever I have to say about them, I say that in there. So that when they collect it, they know what I'm thinking of them. So. The question is not, do you have something to hide? The 
question is whether we control government or the government controls us. So what can people do? First, they can declare themselves to be free. And secondly, they can declare it by using strong encryption when they use telephones, by talking to journalists about the things that they experience, by actually taking steps to defund organizations that fundamentally violate the Grundgesetz, that reinterpret the G10 privacy laws that are criminal in nature. Sorry to interrupt, but we're picking up a signal from beyond the space-time continuum. Quick, switch on the juice channeling portals. Wait, is that George Orwell? Good day, too. Wow, what do we owe this honor to? I tried to warn you, noobs, but I see you are actually fools. What else you thought this was an instruction manual? Yes, <clears throat> so can you advise us? What would you have us do? An open and universal internet is the most effective tool you have to address the issues that afflict the world at hand. Therefore, protecting it is the most essential task that stands before your generation. I think I understand. Hush, man, you must not lose the internet. Heed this mantra. Who controls the internet controls the data. And who controls the data controls the future. We're losing you. I leave you with a tool to use. An onion? Don't be simple, Robert. This is but a simile. It stands for Tor. Tor? Google it. It's for anonymity. This onion router open network helps considerably against tyranny, but its abilities only work if all you f***ers use it consistently. And even if you don't use it, run it, so its force swells. Thanks, Mr. Orwell. From now on, call me George Torwell. If we'd had such tools when I wrote this, well, it would have been so much simpler to tell Big Brother to go f*** himself. For example, who here is a biologist? Raise your hand if you're a biologist. Anyone? Not one person. There's great. One, 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 one person. Great. One now raise your hand if you feel you have mastered the ability to reduce your risk about having safe sex, like in terms of reducing the threat that sex can pose. Right? Who here has ever functionally and properly used a condom? It's okay. Don't be embarrassed. Okay. Yeah. Well, you should be. You should be embarrassed. The people that didn't raise your hands, in particular. Um, that's a that's a weird weird thing. I don't really know what to say to you, but the people that raise your hand, you'll know that there is. We just got a very was, innocent audience here. Wait, that's all. You did you raise your hand both times, biologist? Okay, good, good. So what we know is that something we can learn something here, which is that the biologist both understands how to protect himself and he also understands what it is in a technical sense, in a scientific sense, what it is he's protecting himself from and so on. And everybody else that raised their hand doesn't self-identify as an expert, and yet you probably have great sex in a protected manner that reduces your risk. We should be able to accomplish this with cryptography, with encryption. We should be able to understand that we have an epidemic of surveillance and that we need to practice harm reduction strategies with cultural norms that promote it. If you want to connect to me, you have to do it safely. You're the light that the world's demanding. Make it bright and make Nothing to hide. Sofort Krypto, Krypto Party, Krypto. Yeah, I'll post that on Twitter because it works much better with real pictures and not dark blind screen. Um, I think. I'm not going to talk about tools here. You should join us at the crypto party if you want to do that. If you have questions not about tools, um, you're welcome to ask them. If you have questions about tools, please come to the crypto party because I'm not going to start teach, teaching PGP here on stage. Anyone? Questions? All right, here we go. Awesome. Thank you, Marie, for that excellent talk. Um, perhaps more feedback than anything else. The video at the end. It's awesome. It's beautifully edited. Um, it 
tells us why we need to be afraid of and aware of and fight government surveillance. Not one clip, not one quote about the role of corporations. Why? I was so expecting that from you. <laughs> um, I made this video when I was in the scene for less than a year. I was starting to learn and the context in which I learned it, which is probably the Berlin context where we have crypto parties, people actually worry about the NSA and the BND more than anything else. Um, I also have projects to make videos on other subjects. The problem is I have no time. This is where I was a year ago in the context of my own scene. I was so thinking that when I started the video. Someone else? First, thank you for the great presentation. My question is uh, more or less, uh, don't you think it's better to teach why uh, cryptography, cryptography is not bad than uh, that cryptography is good? Because uh, most of the cases, people are looking bad at cryptography because they are uh, taught basically by the media and uh, whatnot that uh, it's used mostly by uh, people with malicious intents? I think you're right. Nonetheless, it's a question of context. And as crypto party teachers, the people who think crypto, party, uh, crypto is bad normally just don't show up. So this is a work that needs to be done on another level. Um, what we do is help the people who already come and want to learn it. Um, we have sometimes people coming to a crypto party and saying, yeah, I want to learn to encrypt, but Tor is bad. And then we teach them, obviously, that it's not bad. But um, this is a step that should maybe be done in schools to start of it with, and in the media. And you can't like hope that people who think crypto is bad are going to spend their Friday afternoon at a crypto party. Someone else? Um, I think that. Um towards the beginning of your talk, you, you said that uh, some people come to crypto parts and they enjoyed it quite a lot, but others are resistant to this idea and uh, don't come or come only once and uh, they don't use what they've learned uh, in these crypto parties. I think unfortunately most of the people who come to crypto party won't use the tools again. Or them, which, which is why we do, for example, browser plugins, because they might not use Tor. It's too complicated, it's too slow. Um, it's great if you need it, but people who don't really feel like they need it are just gonna play along with it. Maybe they're gonna use their Firefox browser with some plugins. Um, you can't expect everyone to use PGP on a daily basis. It's too complicated. And who do I use PGP with if my friends don't have it? It's like if I teach one person how to use PGP but none of their friends uses it, they can't use it on an everyday basis. Uh, the idea is that some groups of friends come to Crypto Party and they're gonna do it maybe to play around and maybe they th care a little bit, but they're not gonna do it for everything. I personally don't encrypt everything. I have really good friends who don't use PGP and I have no choice. Um, so it's like, it's a success for a part of the people. It's a success because most people who come still understand the ideas behind it, but you don't get everyone to encrypt through crypto parties. Okay, thank you. But my question was more, more along the lines of, uh, have you met any resistance from people to these crypto parties? And one, why do you think that? I didn't uh, understand you from the acoustic. Can you speak louder, please? Uh, have, you, have you met people who are resistant to crypto parties? who don't want to go to crypto parties for oh, some yeah. reason or other. And can you, do, do you know why they don't, don't want to do that? Well, one of my best friends said, I'd rather be spied on by the NSA than use any tools for encryption. It's like, it happens all the time. It's people don't want to have to work on that. They have enough stuff to do. People don't really care because they don't really know about surveillance. Most people don't want to go to crypto parties. This is why we need something else. Someone else? In that case, round of applause. Uh, if suddenly questions pop up.